If Hungary gets called out on this, what's our right to intervene in other countries from mistreating minorities? If we mistreat gay people in our own countries, what's our co uh, correlation or reaction towards Russia when they mistreat us in Russia? We think those are situations where we lose our credibility, have a hard time. More importantly, we also think the EU is a promise of freedom and a lot of liberal rights when we face them. That's why at least some people in the Ukraine go to the streets for this promise of a better future and for the liberal laws coming along with it. And we think that's very valuable. That's something that gives the EU strength as a soft power, gives some credibility. And if we can't enforce the police our own countries, all our member states, we lose a lot of that, we lose a lot of the power that the EU currently has, and that makes them beneficial. Because we would think the EU mainly strives from being that soft power that's seen as attractive, liberal, progressive. That's our advantage on the international scale. Second of all, will there be backlash? Sure. A lot of people might dislike this very, very much. We're heavily aware. Why is that not such a big issue? A. Because people who benefit from these policies benefit heavily, whereas those who don't benefit are harmed marginally. If I'm a religious person and I don't let gay people marry, maybe I'll be slightly upset and I feel like, oh, but that's bad. Other people get to do something nice, which I don't want them to do. Whereas the person positively affected by it is something that influences their entire life. More vitally, if we talk about abortion, this is about ruining or not ruining the life of a young woman, where you, being mildly religiously offended, does not justify the right of offending this woman. Second of all, we often believe that form ultimately needs to change in societal mindsets. Maybe not immediately, but in a lot of countries, as soon as the law implemented through some social change, eventually grow generations growing up are more likely to adapt to those norms. It becomes more normalized if those laws are enacted, if gay marriage is something that the state condones. And we think that ultimately, this change is bound to happen in the long run. We think it's so much more likely if we speed it up. And even though there might be backlash, we think they're justified because it increases the life quality of a minority significantly, and therefore, also believe it's a long-term investment that we're willing to take. Cultural similarities, as a third point, are sometimes interesting. Different food, different cultures, different ideas, different movies can be extremely good. Until they reach a point where they become divisive. Until they reach the point where your country violates something I perceive as existential for my existence. Where your country violates a minority right that I perceive to be vital. Where I feel personally offended and where it's no longer interesting but something that creates conflict between you and me. That harms our relationship when we strive for peace, but it also harms our relationship when we strive for economic integration, for traveling more between countries, for getting to know each other, because then we perceive Hungarians as ignorant bastards because they mistreat the Roma, which is wrong, but that's the perception you get when you read certain medias, when you look how they are mistreating them, and you can say the same thing about French people and a lot of other Europeans, and Germans, included. Um, so, please, yeah, open it. Well, close Yeah, I'm interested to hear that from you. So probably they will be very, very offended by what happens. They might have different cultural norms. We agree on that. What we see is there's a project to a certain amount of homogenization. You have a lot of freedoms. You can do what you want. You might not like similarities. But if we point out to you that those similarities will be beneficial for you as a country, for the EU, and for the EU to achieve its purpose, then we think it's highly beneficial for us as the EU to enforce those policies. Fourthly, we care a lot about freedom of movement, freedom of integration, being allowed to go wherever I want. If I'm gay and I want, I know that inside this country I'm not allowed to marry, I'm not welcome, I will face a hostile environment that is no longer a country I'm happy to move to. That's likely a country I'm not going to move to. Same as if I know I don't have the basic standards, the basic human rights that I perceive in my more progressive country to be given, no longer existing in this country. We think that means no longer living freely in those countries if I choose to. A sentiment of threatening, a sentiment of not being welcome, but also disincentivizing companies and other economic corporations from actually going into these countries. What is my incentive as a large European company to extend my arm towards other European countries if I know that workers from my country will not feel accepted? If people engaging with me will not feel welcome and at home in those countries? We think that harms economic integration and harms a lot of the goals of the common market we see, commonly enforced, commonly pushed, just as other labor laws are with other countries. So what have we told you today? The EU has a responsibility. It culturally wants to be more and more similar and enforces policies in this direction. That's a natural extension of doing it, and it helps people a lot. Please, Professor.